Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explained. My name is David, and today we're gonna do another edit bit question. This is level medium, and um, so yeah, I'm gonna put it into my medium playlist. I hope that these are helping you. Uh, as always, if you have not attempted the problem yourself, then please go ahead and do so. If you're finding if you're finding this on YouTube, the question is linked down in the description. And if you're coming to this video via the comments, well, um, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. And please, if you see my um, comment in the comments or in the resources tab, uh, go ahead and upvote it for me on there. Um, what I'm noticing right now is with a lot of these edit questions, there's not too many comments in there. Uh, at least not kind of compared to another platform like Lead Code where uh, the comment sections are saturated for every single question. But uh, I think it does help. I think it'll eventually help once this uh, once these comment sections are saturated. If um, viewers like you who are on Edibit uh, upvote it, then I think it'll be beneficial for uh, me, for others, who knows. Anyway, so this is a level medium question. Like I said, it says, uh, so let's get to it. Convert key values in an object to array. And this one uses arrays and objects, and I like it. I like this one because it uses a different data structure. I particularly really like objects just because uh, once you start getting into um, linked lists, uh, trees, graphs, you use a lot of objects. And if you're coming from a different language, objects are like maps. If you're not coming from a different uh, programming language, Objects, maps, they're a data structure, like we said. And so in the simplest form, we just let's break down that word. It's another structure for holding data. Just like an array is a data structure, it's a it's a structure for hold, for holding these data objects or data things, you know. Um, I didn't want to say objects within the definition of objects. Right? So let's get to the question. Write a function that converts an object into an array of keys and values. And as you can see here, uh, I mean there's no notes here. Um, you might get an interview situation, and I keep on referring back to interview situations because I'm assuming that you're watching these videos because you want to be a software engineer, and the the one thing you have to do to get a job as a software engineer is interviews, and our interviews are pretty much like this. We get a question and we prove to the person on the other side of the phone or uh, the person standing next to us when we're in front of a whiteboard that we can solve the algorithm algorithm problem that they gave us um, for entry level positions at least uh, I think well of course for later on and on they start giving you different kinds of questions um, but like design questions but uh, let's focus on the algorithms of course that's what I'm good at explaining so they might give you just this explanation they tell you, okay, we're going to give you an object and we want you to turn it into an array of keys and values. What does that even mean? We don't even know what that key and value looks like. And so, you know, of course, you're going to have to start asking them questions. Uh, good thing for us, we have the examples right here, object to array. So like they said, they're going to give us an object as the argument, one object, and they want you to give them an array of uh, converts an object into an array of keys and values. Okay, so an array stack. What they want is an array of arrays of keys and values. Just just going straight off of this grammar here, an object into an array of keys and values. Perhaps they just wanted an array, and each item was either a key or a value. That could have been what they wanted. But if you dig deeper and ask them, okay, can you please give me an example, which you always have to do, um, they'll tell you, okay the return value is going to be an array and within it will be arrays of key value pairs and so that's kind of exactly what they want from us um, just going based off of what we what we know so far what I might ask them is uh, let's see is it possible for there to be multiple key value pairs like say say D goes to 1 and D also goes to two, is that even possible? Would I face something like that? Actually, well, that wouldn't be possible in an, in an object situation, but let's see, weird cases that can throw us off. Oh, we could ask them, okay, in the, inside that object, is it always going to be a key value pair? Perhaps an object will have a nested object in it. Will the key always have a value pair? or will it not? If it doesn't, then what D 
do you want it to look like? Um, something like that, you know? Why does that matter? Because maybe it, D, maybe D didn't have a value pair of one. Do we want to say D and just have that be inside of its own array? Or do we want it to be D comma undefined, you know? That could be what they wanted. Um, items like that. Other than that, I feel like this uh, uh, question is not too hard. It's a medium level question. And so going through the strategy, what we know we have to do is we know we have to look at every single key value pair in the object, right? Because we're going to have to map it out. Literally, we're going to map it out so we go through that map. And so we're going to have to look at every key. We're going to have to look at every value. And then in the moment of vision, so in the moment that we see those two, we have to uh, put them in an array and put that into a bigger array. And so that is the only, that's pretty much the game plan there. We read through the object uh, like, at, like we have been with arrays, you know? Uh, we look at each key value pair. And once we have the key value pairs, what we do is we stick them in a smaller array, their own personal array, and then we stick them into a bigger array. Kind of like you're, you're in a train. You put your key value pair into a room, and that room is going to be part of the train, So, which is the array that we're going to output in the end. So let's, OK, let's go ahead and get straight to the code. It is, this is another bit of code that works. There are multiple solutions to this, and so I uh, wanted to give you guys a couple of examples. Like we said, we want to go through the object, but first, what are we going to output? We're going to output an array, and so let's just um, output. So this is going to be our big array, where we're going to put in the smaller array of key value pairs. And so since we have our big skeleton, our big train already built, we're going to now have to go through an object. And so we use the for loop of going through an object, um, key in obj. And that's pretty much how we're going to get the key. This is, this is the format of going iterating through an object. And let's uh, create a value or a variable so that we can easily start using the value. OB, um, yeah, OBJ of key, that'll give us the value because we are uh, pretty much tapping into object using the key. And therefore, this will result in the value. And so it'll give us the value. And at this point, what we want to do is we want to get their answer, the answer array, and push into it an array with the key that concats with um, the value. And another, so this is pretty much going to work. Let's go ahead and prove that it does, first of all. OK, there we go. Uh, not too many test cases here, just two. But anyways, uh, the reason why this works is because the, the main idea is still the same, that we take the bigger array that we're going to put all the key value pairs in, and we create a small array with the key in it. But of course, this key still needs the object. And so uh, we concat it. Maybe what we could also have done and it's not push key comma val. I haven't tried this. Let's, let's see if this works. Perhaps it'll work too. Oh yeah, that works too. Even simpler. We don't even have to use concat. Um, a little bit winded example, a long-winded example would be uh, within this for loop, we could have created the container, you know, created that personal container where we're going to put the key value and just push in the key and the value. That'll create that container to look like this and then just push the container in the answer array. And so there are multiple ways to do this. And uh, one thing that I wanted to point out for concat is if you're familiar with this, and well, if you're familiar with this, yet not very familiar with this, you might think, hey, this is not going to work. Uh, you're concatting an array to just a value. This should be in an array also. And that's what I thought too, except when I went to the MDN and took a look at what it really looked like, um, you could put in both just values and values in arrays. So concat num2, um, let's see. There was an example here where you could, yeah, see so you concatted letters is this array here, and you concatted both just single values and values within an array, and it all just came out like that anyways. The only time it doesn't do that is if um, num2, if you're concatting nested arrays, then it'll become nested within the results array. But anyways, um, 
that's beyond the point. You don't even have to use concat for this. You can. I think this would be the simplest, actually, this answer right here. Um, and so I hope that helps you. Uh, if you had trouble with this question, um, I think the hardest part was probably just perhaps getting the value, you know, making sure you have each component. And you didn't even have to create a variable. You could have simply done uh, the key and just stuck that in there. And that would have worked too, except it's cleaner when you separate it out as a variable, just because, you know, assuming that your code does get more complicated in the future, it's always great to use it, uh, variables instead of the actual um, call, just because for clarity, you know. Uh, you're in an interview situation, it's hard enough. Don't stretch yourself out by not taking the one second to create a variable. Um, okay, well, I think that's enough for this video. Hopefully it helped you. Um, if you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to see any other Edibit questions, uh, you could go ahead and comment in the que uh, discussion below, comments below. Um, and if you see this, if you see my comment inside Edibit, please upload it. Thank you for your time, and I hope you have a good one. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.